everyone. Hello. This is Anonymous Tea. Hello to all of the Anonymous Tea sippers. Hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Today I'm going to be reviewing the last set of episodes of 20 Somethings Austin, season one, episodes nine through 12. And we're going to get right into it. Um, also, stay tuned for the end because I have a lot to say on Kamari and Roxy. So stay tuned at the end I'm going to I have lots of thoughts on the two of them um so where we left off was the end of episode eight where the group went to a branch we had the new roommate Adam arrive and you know Natalie made this nice big dinner Natalie told um Abby how much she is into Adam and she's gonna go for him and the next thing she knows Abby and Adam are flirting away at the ranch. Natalie is pissed. Abby does some type of sneaky link into Adam's room. Um, even after she noticed something was off with Natalie. Um, and then they have a heart to heart where Abby claims that, you know, she didn't think of herself or didn't think of anybody else's feelings but her own and essentially she always needs male validation she has to be you know the one receiving all the attention from guys and that gets in the way of her personal development and how she interacts with others and how she treats people depending upon how she can be this man eater so and then also Oscar and Kiki essentially broke up or essentially ended their situationship because um, Kiki wanted to pursue a relationship with Oscar and Oscar basically, you know, kept his distance and really wasn't trying to feature that. So that was the end of that. Next. Um, oh, and I also want to say um, overall, I mean, Adam seems like a very nice, likable guy. I just miss the heck out of Bruce. I don't know if anybody else misses Bruce, but I miss Bruce so much. He just had like a larger than life personality that really just meshed well with the group. I loved his friendship with Kamari. I loved his bromance with um, Kiki. I thought he just had a really great dynamic of, you know, of all the males that were in the cast. And I miss him terribly. And so it's so nice to see him now on social media, just like interacting with the cast and everything. But I kind of low key feel like Bruce would have stayed on the show had him and Isha worked out. I think Abby pulled the biggest cock block ever and preventing from that happening. I think Abby saw the vibes between Isha and um, Bruce and you know, just as they were hitting it off, just as they were talking and spending all that time together in swoops, Abby to pull Isha away to make it seem like there's something wrong or that there's something sketch about Bruce. And actually, Bruce is an amazing guy, is an incredible guy. And I actually think Bruce would have, you know, wined and dined and really treated Isha with, you know, the love, the respect, the attention that she deserved. And I just, I hate that we did not have an opportunity to see that flourish. But I honestly believe, real talk, that if he would have stayed, I think if things were able to progress with Isha, if he was able to go out on a couple of one-on-one -on -one dates just to see if there was anything there, just to see if there was any type of spark, any type of chemistry, because it's just not a coincidence that you all are living in, you know, these two homes by each other and you guys also happen to be each other's hinge matches. Meanwhile, the rest of the cast is on hinge and they didn't, you know, match each other. Their profiles didn't come up on their hinge searches. So how did that work out? How did that happen for you two? You know, like I just I just feel like it was unnecessarily sabotaged. And I think things could have really blossomed with Bruce and Isha had that opportunity happened. But I think it was easy for somebody like Abby to have, you know, get in Isha's head and have her think, you know, wrong things about Bruce. So that way, that's one awful meal on the table that Abby still can pursue or still, you know, have her hooks in in the event, um, you know, things don't work out with whomever she actually really wants. So there's that. 
Next, <laughs> um, we head into our Halloween episode and essentially, um, you know, Adam, he's getting acclimated to Texas. He, of course, you know, works for a draft seltzer brand and he wants to expand from Seattle. He's their marketing guru and, you know, he wants to go to different bars in Austin to see if they would be interested in, you know, selling his seltzer brand. So he meets with one bar, basically, you know, wants to set up a tasting, um, wants to schedule an appointment so that, you know, everybody can kind of taste the different flavors, have a little tasting event, and then see from there, depending upon how that goes, um, whether or not they want to start selling his draft seltzer. And if that works out there, then he can possibly expand. Um then, like I said, since it was Halloween, the group was doing some um, carving of pumpkins. They were doing some shopping of Halloween costumes. And so the um, big event before we get to the Halloween thing was, um, you know, Adam later on had his little event where he was doing his promotional party of his, you know, different salsa brands and was inviting the group to go. And so most of the group didn't go or had other plans or did a rain check. And um, Abby, of course, said she had to go, but she was going for ulterior motives. She was going specifically because she wanted to apply for another bartender job. But prior to that, um, her and Adam, they were still flirting. They were still, you know, interacting and doing all of this, even post conversation of Abby and Natalie. So at some point, either Abby grew a conscience or her sister convinced her or, you know, Abby did some self-reflection and realized she was moving mad. And next thing you know, at this event, um, Abby pulls Adam aside and essentially tells him that they have to kind of put a pause on things. Um, you know, that essentially Abby has some work and some things that she needs to do individually. And, you know, she doesn't want the reputation of already, you know, messing with a couple of different guys and, you know, how all that's going to play out, um, considering in both circumstances. And let's just keep it a buck. The situation with Kamari advanced as quickly as it did because Abby knew that Roxy liked Kamari first. Abby knew that Roxy thought he was attractive, that Roxy is into that. She already knew. And, you know, she 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 had her hooks in. And, you know, the same thing with Adam. Natalie said she was going to go for Adam. And next thing you know, um, here comes Abby. So it just was not looking good. It was looking very messy. It was looking very sus and very inappropriate. So they cool on that. Adam, of course, is not happy because he's kind of like, well, whatever, like, I feel what I feel. But, you know, he respects her decision and just basically said, fine, they'll just remain friends or whatever. Then we get to our Halloween party, our Halloween event. And um, it's actually a cool event. They're at like this roller skating rink and everybody's like dressed up and flirting and having a good time and this and that. And so... um. Kiki and Natalie, they have new hinge dates that they are waiting on to arrive. And, you know, Kiko's date, Kiki's date arrives a little bit later. And then Natalie's date, he arrives much, much later. Um, his name is Zach. And already I just had a bad vibe about him because I feel like anybody that is not punctual is already a red flag in my book. And Natalie has already been stood up before previously. And now this guy shows up hours late. Like I just felt like he was just trying to be there for a little bit of exposure, a little bit of camera time. But he genuinely wasn't there for interest in Natalie. And I wish Natalie saw that. That. Because right from the jump, anybody that sends you a pic of their privates and, um, you know, that is their first interaction with you, they are not looking for an, a relationship. They are looking for a hookup. 
And so I don't know if it's because of Natalie's, um, you know, how she grew up where her parents had cameras everywhere, or it's just her inexperience to dating and relationships and her inexperience with, you know, getting to know the different nuances on how men move. But I just feel bad because I feel as though she could have avoided some of these situations with these guys had she paid attention to some of the signs that were there and paid attention to the conversations that we're having. So, um, but I think it was one of those things. It could just be one of those things, you know, you're lonely or you've been single for so long that you don't know, you know, what to do. And then you just accept, you know, the first person that, you know, gives you a little bit of attention. But the problem with that is if you don't completely vet that person, you're going to get your heart broken and you're going to give too much to somebody who doesn't really care about you. And unfortunately, um, you know, that's why I felt kind of bad for Natalie and Kiki not having that experience, not having that exposure and everything else. So um, that is the case there. Then there was an issue towards the end of the episode between Isha and Michael because Basically, Michael is, you know, having some doubts and having some second thoughts about potentially going back to L.A. because he's broke, um, in part because his comedy is awful. Um, let's just keep it 100. <laughs> the, co the, the comedy is not good. And, you know, essentially he doesn't have any money. Um, you know, while he did spend the money, you know, to buy one of Isha's pieces, I still, you know... It, like for him asking if she would pay for dinner and and everything else like it, it's just it's just a lot and I don't know why but there was like a third open mic met event that they filmed <laughs> for Michael and I wish I don't know if Michael's trolling at this point but I just don't understand why he couldn't just stay at his day job and do the comedy thing like on nights and weekends like that's when most people go to comedy shows anyways like, why are we completely quitting everything, blowing through whatever money you did have saved up, trying to pursue this comedy thing, and you have your honest feedback from the fans' reaction, from the people in the audience, if they're not reacting to you? Michael thinks it's an issue just with Austin. No, buddy, the issue is with your comedy. People aren't feeling it, and you think they're going to treat you better in L.A.? And you're really going to leave your day job to live at home with your parents to pursue this comedy thing full time after the embarrassment that you just exposed to potentially billions of people um, on Netflix. You really think that that's going to translate to opportunities in comedy after they see your three stand up attempts? There's a lot of work you need to get on. There's a lot that you need to do. And a lot of your jokes just weren't funny. They were inappropriate. They didn't make sense. And it just, it was not moving the needle by a long shot. Like it just did not do what it needed to do. And that is why people were looking at you weird. Full stop. Full, complete stop. That is why people were looking at you weird. So I don't know ultimately, you know, what's going to happen with that. Isha felt a certain type of way because now that, you know, people have bought her piece and, you know, more people are going to start buying her pieces now. Um, there's opportunity for Isha to stay in Texas a little bit longer and, you know, submit more, not only submit more clothing for her fashion line, but also work on new pieces and new things that people can purchase. But... Michael, I don't know. He's just moving mad. Like he really just needs to find another position in Austin that's similar to what he was doing previously in L.A. and just keep it moving and then just see, you know, what happens with this comedy thing. But he needs to he needs to go dark for a while on the comedy stage and just really, you know, really work on it because it's just I just don't see it for him. And at this point, I just don't even know if he's trolling or a glutton for punishment but i mean the confidence that he has to go up to these establishments and still make an attempt is funny in itself because it just goes to show you that you know people certain people feel like they can do anything and everything but 
there are certain things that do require a certain level of talent and discipline for the best execution of results. So, um, so there's that. So there's that. Um, so next, um, you know, Michael feels bad for, you know, telling all of the stuff to Isha, telling her that, you know, he's broke and that he might have to go back to L.A. And Isha, of course, is upset because she's really into him. She really likes him and all this and that. Michael basically is starting to feel a certain way and starting to feel like Isha is high maintenance. Um, however, he f realizes the way that he may have approached the conversation with Isha might not have been the best. And um, due to her reaction, uh, Mike went and bought her some flowers and bought her a card or whatever else. And, um, you know, that seemed to, you know, smooth things over for a little bit. And like I had mentioned before, things are going well with Aisha's, you know, pieces. So even after Mike bought the first one, there was more people that bought the rest of Aisha's pieces. So therefore, they called her, the boutique did, for her to bring in the rest of her pieces and that they could sell her the rest. And also that she would be receiving a check. So that was really nice. Um, I think that really inspired Isha to grind harder and really, you know, elevate her fashion line. So that was good news for her. Um, so next we get into, you know, the group. They pretty much pulled an all-nighter at this, like, skating Halloween party event thing. Um, so it must have been, like, really, really well um, as far as everything that happened. Um, the next day, the group is like putting together like some Halloween decorations around the house and outside in the common areas and everything else. Um, then also, N Natalie goes on a double date with um, Kamari and Roxy. And I was just trying to look at the dynamics of um, Zach and Natalie because I just I still didn't get the vibe that he necessarily was fully into Natalie like Natalie thinks. Like, it was just something completely off with him. And it kind of got, my suspicions got confirmed um, because later um, that evening, um, or it was either later the evening or the next evening, they had their own type of party. Everybody was having a good time. Um, Natalie also invites, um, you know, Zach over to spend the night or whatever. So, um, you know, that takes place and everything else. And she then puts the towel over the camera. And basically, we start to hear some kissing and some moaning. So basically, they had sex or whatever hooked up. And, um, you know, that was that. And so then the next morning, um, we see Zach basically kind of doing this like walkout at like five in the morning. And it kind of just the way that his whole disposition was, his disposition alone told me that that was his only objective with Natalie, that his objective was just to say a couple nice things, maybe only have to spring for like possibly one date, if that, because technically the roller skiing thing was already like, you know, I'm sure pre-planned, whatever. Um, or possibly even free and probably one of those things where you just pay on your own if you want like appetizers or drinks or something. So really all he had to do was just, you know, pretend to put up a good front for some of these people and some of her roommates and then he could just slide in and hook up and then do his smash and dash. So the next morning at like 6 a.m., um, you know, poor Natalie, she is texting him, texting Zach, saying last night was fun. Did you make it home? And he basically ghosts her. And it's like, and it's, and it's so, and it, <laughs> this is why iPhone is so crazy because you see immediately when he, she sends these text message, you see like the three dots indicating that obviously he sees the message and that, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to reply, but at least you know that they are aware of the message. Um, and I'm like, yeah, he's not 
he's not um this isn't it he doesn't see it for the two of you this was always just going to be a hookup that was all it was going to be and he was just biding his time he just wanted a little bit of camera time and then he just wanted to you know say whatever he needed to say to get whatever he wanted from you and then he was going to disappear and move on to the next person i mean i hate that it sounds you know mean like that but unfortunately that's just how some men are and you have to have better discernment and i get that natalie um and even kiki too they're both a little bit younger and naive and things of that nature and they're a little bit younger in terms of being younger in the event of when they start to actually date that they were late bloomers they did not get to experience a lot of the things that you know some other people might experience in college or um you know in their 20s so it seems like with her being in her mid-20s or so that she's finally just starting to experience what dating is and what dating looks like and all that stuff because it sounds like all of her previous situations have just been situationships and hookups and not a real relationship and you know this kind of once again what kind of reinfer reinforced some insecurities that her and Kiki, Kiki had and they're both like laying together you know kind of drowning their <laughs> sorrows and and everything else and I felt bad for them because it's like you know people when things like this happen people think it's their fault people think that um you know they did something wrong and a lot of the time unfortunately there are just certain people who they are a master at playing the game and playing people and you know there's certain people there's a certain type of people that they run this type of game on and you know just say whatever they need to to get whatever they want and then they are out as soon as they got there um unfortunately and that's just how it goes that's just what happens um so then we move on to oh boy where do we move on to <laughs> um where do we move on uh miss abby miss abby miss abby oh my gosh uh so apparently abby does get the job at this other bar however we never actually knew any of this we just randomly saw a scene later on in the episodes of her working at this bar and her like getting some ice or whatever and i was actually shocked because the hot mess express that was her at that first bar where she was making those nasty drinks i had i was shocked that she got this other position but maybe she'd been working on practicing you know her mixology stuff and maybe things got a little bit better after that because i was completely blown and so essentially the rest of these episodes, you know, the time frame is winding down. Everybody is trying to figure out their next move, whether or not they're going to stay in Austin or if they're going to go back home and just stay home permanently. Because some people, what they're doing is they're essentially going to go home for the holidays, for Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. And then the plan is um, right after that, they are going to then come back to Austin for those that are going to be staying. And so pretty much it sounded like the whole group was staying except for Michael. So that also kind of caused some, you know, more tension and things of that nature with Isha because she kind of felt a certain way and everything else. Um, then also it seemed like Natalie and Adam started to kind of have a bigger bond in their friendship. So that was pretty nice. And um, then Miss Abby, oh my gosh, there's more I have to say on her in a little while, but I'll at least go with, um, in addition to her working at the bar, she also met up with Kiki and they had went to like this bookstore. And now that Abby is all out of options or the options of the men that are her roommates, um, she now wants to explore women. And here's the thing. If you say you're bisexual, wouldn't that indicate that you could have potentially been going out on dates with women, I don't know, these other eight, nine, ten weeks that you have been in the house? Like, why was it that once the male validation thing kind of cooled off on you, that it was then you started to, you know, want to see what was up with certain women? 
because you never had that energy before. Like, even though you thought Isha was cute, you never actually hit on her or anything like that. You just basically cock blocked her and Bruce from being a power couple. You didn't like that. So I just, I don't know. I just kind of got some sus vibes that she was just, you know, doing this as something to do because she already had, you know, that one weird hookup where she was pressed over Kamari kissing the one girl. And so then she just goes out with like some hinge guy and has like her own walk of shame. And so rather than continue down that path, she just like randomly goes on this date with this woman. But I don't know. I just didn't get the vibe that she was into her. I felt like she was just going just to go, just to have something to do and just to take her mind off of the fact that like there's no chance for her to be with Kamari or Adam. And it I don't know. It just felt really weird. Like it just felt completely off that like she was on this date. I don't know. It didn't feel like there was genuine interest there. Like, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I didn't see it. I saw it more as a reaction date because of the fact she couldn't have the guys that she wanted. And she basically romanticized both of the gentlemen who never were talking about anything more than what it was with her. And so this was like her coping mechanism because she didn't want to go down the path of continuing to hook up with more guys um and this and that so that's honestly how i felt about the situation um honestly and truly so so that's on that um so then afterwards after this date um they are like on a boat they are like doing some type of bird call and it's like a very long date on this boat. I mean, like it's like well into nighttime before this date is over and it just looked like they had been out in the water for hours. So um, she gives this girl like a little kiss at the end, um, but it was just it was just very awkward. It just didn't even look like Abby was herself. Whereas normally when she is out with the other guys, or even if she's not even out, if she's just around other guys, um, you know, she's all over them. She's putting it out there. She's letting them know what is up and everything else. And so, um, you know, it shows them they're having like drinks and snacks and everything else um, on this boat and, you know, just doing the different cat calls of, you know, little birds and all this. So, so that was essentially um, their date. So I found that to be very interesting. Um, and so then pretty much like, I kind of felt the last episode was kind of weird. Cause I felt like we didn't get like a lot of meat in it. It was kind of like basically everybody, you know, going out to dinner and to the bar for the last time, um, before the holidays. And then everybody, you know, saying goodbye to each other and, um, you know, this and that. And, um, you know, Natalie and Kiki, they looked for an apartment together. So they plan on living together um, when they come back to Austin from the holidays, which I found to be very interesting. Um, but they seem to have a very cute friendship. But um, that was very interesting. And then Natalie also still, as of now, works at the coffee shop and everything else. Um we didn't get too much about what Kiki Kiki's going to do career wise. Um, so that um, hasn't really been explored. Um, also, Adam had got some good news that because of the success of his promo um, event with his seltzer company that he works for that's out of Seattle, that things went so well that they decided to partner with the company and they're going to partner with all of Texas. So that's going to be huge that essentially Adam got a promotion to now lead the charge, lead the promo tour and try to get the seltzer into all of the bars and restaurants and things all over Texas. And so that was pretty cool and exciting for Adam. So props to him. That was pretty awesome to just come in, you know, in the middle of this process, completely nailed like your first bar and get you know that exposure get that contract happening and then things go so well that you know word of mouth and everything else spreads and everybody else wants your company's um seltzer so that's awesome 
props to him. Um, so then it looked like at the end that, um, Michael and Isha possibly were going to break up or possibly was going to have like some type of complicated long distance thing. However, um, they kind of did like this dramatic thing at the end where like Michael left and appeared to be leaving and was like about to drive away in his car and then like does this like dramatic thing where he like comes back into the house and is like to Isha, I'm going to stay. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, what is happening? Is this like a, a rom-com? Like, what are we doing? Um, Like, why did he wait till the very last moment to do this? Like, why couldn't he have done this? Like, he didn't have this epiphany before, before, you know, the final day. I don't know. It was just kind of bizarre. But even if he stays, what is he going to do career-wise? Because if he's still going to pursue comedy, I just, I just don't see the comedy thing for him. I just don't see it at all. I don't at all. So I don't know, you know, what's going to happen with that. I truly do not. So now, is that everybody? Did I get to everybody? I think we got to everybody. So now I want to get to my favorite people, Miss Roxy and Mr. Kamari. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I am so happy there was a little bit more screen time for Roxy the back portion of these episodes. There still was not overall enough Roxy. Um, you know, in episodes one through 12, I just, you know, it was cute because she was joking on Twitter. She said, if you blinked, you missed her. <laughs> and she, I mean, it's nothing but facts because I really think we were done a disservice by not seeing enough Roxy. I know nothing about her career. If she was working from home this whole time in Austin, I have no doubt, no idea if she has another job that's in Austin or why she's staying in Austin. Like what is going on with her career path? We have no idea. All we know is that, um, you know, Roxy went to an HBCU. We know that, um, you know, she it works in IT. But like I said, we don't know what she was doing in terms of, you know, the whole 12 weeks she was in Texas um, in terms of the career front. So we we don't know if we, she took a leave of absence from her job. We don't know if her job is remote. We don't know if she got another job in Austin or if she was living off of her savings. We have no clue because there was no story on Roxy at all. And it really kind of agitated me because it really seemed like the group loved her. And she was a bubbly personality. She was such a good friend to everybody. And I especially loved her friendship with her and Isha and her friendship with her and Natalie. I just thought... Their friendships were amazing. We really didn't see too much interaction between Roxy and Abby and maybe because, you know, she saw Abby for what she was. I don't know, because it just kind of got the frenemy vibes of Roxy and Abby. So we never really saw that interaction. So I kind of felt a way about that because I'm like, um, so they only really gave Roxy screen time as it pertained to her personal life, which I had a problem with. So like we only saw Roxy really in the beginning when, you know, she was talking about how she liked Kamari and how handsome and how good looking and everything that he looked. And then also the, you know, initial crush that she had on Michael, which I still don't know why that crush happened or how that even materialized. I have no clue. Um, so after all of that, essentially, um, you know, things start to heat up with Roxy and Kamari. And first thing I want to say is I loved how things progressed with Kamari and Roxy because I was not sure how this was going to go after the whole Abby situation. Um, but what I loved about Kamari, like first and foremost, I have to say this about Kamari, hands down, one of the best black male reality stars I have ever seen in in a long, 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 long time. I mean, just somebody who is, you know, not stereotypical, not somebody looking to cause drama, not somebody that is being stereotyped to only like a certain type of female. Um, 
not somebody who is negative, who is a gaslighter, who gets into a whole bunch of drama or nonsense with other people. He has handled conflict extremely well, extremely mature. He was a completely, you know, breath the fresh air. Because there has been so much reality TV and there have been so many black men on these reality shows that it gets to the point that if you don't know who's being genuine, if they're just playing a character, if certain people are being casted on purpose, that they purposely know that they're there to cause drama or that they're specifically there to do a particular role. But everything with Kamari, how he handled the Abby situation, how he was with the group, how he is with Roxy, like everything has just felt completely organic. I love that, you know, his upbringing just really just solidifies, you know, how much of a mature, um, personable adult that he is. And it was refreshing to see that translate on reality TV because a lot of times certain people just get a bad edit no matter what. And we just saw so many good qualities in Kamari. And I just have to say props, 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 props to Netflix's casting because I loved all of the Kamari interactions. Like I couldn't take it. Like I was like, he is such a nice guy. Like, this is so awesome. And um, I loved it. And then another thing I wanted to speak to before I dive into the Kamari and Roxy stuff is different females are going to bring out different sides of you and different females who either have something going on or don't have something going on. Men are going to act accordingly. And so I bring this up because if you notice with Abby... Kamari had like no desire to work, no desire to look for modeling agencies, no desire to get any income, was just going to live off, you know, savings, was just going to party hard with all of the roommates and then just go out and work out every day and just, you know, basically bask in this experience. But then he changes up once things start to progress with um, Roxy. Because Roxy is successful in her IT platform and whatever else she's got going on. Um, so that I'm sure motivated him, you know, to get these calls into these agencies since there was only a few weeks left for them to be in Austin before the holidays. And, you know, the next thing you know, he goes on a modeling shoot. He finally, you know, gets in contact with one of the largest agencies in Texas and is able to, you know, review his resume, review some shots, but basically invited him to a studio so that he can do some more modeling and do some more photos and things of that nature so that then um, it can Basically, he can get the yay or nay on whether or not the agency wants to move forward with him and start booking him for some gigs. And so I love the modeling shoot. Um, and it was so cute because Adam went to go support Kamari. And I just I love how supportive, you know, this group is with each other. Um, I, I just can't take it. Like, it, it's just so cute, like how genuinely um, happy everybody is for each other, how much everybody wants everyone to succeed, whether it's in their professional lives or in their personal lives. I just love the bond that this group has. And it was cute because there was a moment where like the photographer like was telling Kamari, you know, to think about, you know, somebody special or whatever. And, you know, Kamari's whole demeanor changed and the photographer was trying to figure out, okay, who is it that has you looking like this, that has your look completely changed up like this? And it was just hilarious. It was completely hilarious. So um, I knew, obviously, it was probably Roxy he was thinking about, and it was just the cutest thing. Um, I just, I really loved it. So um, props to that. And another thing I also noticed in the difference between um, how Kamari was with Abby versus how he is with um, Roxy is Abby initiated all of their conversations, which if you're initiating all the conversations with the guy, he's not really all that into you. But a guy who's into you, who can't stop thinking about you, who is like, you know, really feeling you and, and everything else and wants things to progress, he's going to go out of his way to make sure he's contacting you. And contacting you sometimes almost to the point where you might feel like, you know, they're doing too much, but they're trying to express their interest. They're trying to show, you know, 
they're into it. They're into you. And so it was nice because when Kamari went on his modeling shoot, you know, uh, Roxy had wished him good luck and he's up here texting her baby, um, but used like the abbreviation. I didn't even know that was a thing that BB was an abbreviation for baby because I'm not I'm not even <laughs> hip to all of that. But that was the cutest thing. He wasn't even doing that to Abby. It was just kind of like, oh, bet. And then the other thing I wanted to bring up before I dive in um, deep to Roxy and Kamari is, um, you know, the public displays of affection. So Abby, if you will remember, when she invited Kamari and asked him to go with her to this gelato place and, um, you know, they were outside, they had finished their gelatos, I think. Um, Kamari was about to throw there's a way or whatever. And it was funny because Abby had tried to kiss him and he curved her and basically was like, Hey, we agreed that this was just going to be a friends with benefits situation. This was not going to be anything serious. Why are you trying to kiss me in public? So I feel as though, um, subconsciously Kamari had known that this thing with Abby was going to be whatever it was going to be, but it was going to be nothing more than friends with benefits. And he treated her as such. He never treated her as this, as if this was ever going to lead to anything more than what it was. Um, but for some reason, the wires got crossed and whatever the way that Kamari laid it down for Abby, she caught feeling. She thinks this is her boyfriend and she is going mad over Roxy and Kamari's connection because I'm sure she sees how different Kamari is around Roxy in comparison because he is publicly like on it with Roxy, like publicly flirting with her hardcore um, and then it was cute, the little double date that they went on, um, because it felt as though like Natalie and Zach just had a front row seat at the bowling alley to, you know, the, the dynamic of how Kamari and Roxy are. They have like this amazing vibe. Everything's positive off of each other. They flirt hardcore. They talk, you know, fun trash to each other. And it's the cutest thing. Um, they have the cutest dynamic and I was here for it. They should have been together from the start had Abby not been doing the most. I was just, I was just so agitated because I was like, we could have had 12 weeks. We could have had, maybe we would have gotten more footage of Kamari and Roxy had they been a thing from the start because apparently Roxy gets screen time if she's in, involved with somebody. Um, seems to be what it is on Netflix. Um, but we get no intel on her career or anything. So that was the vibe that I essentially got um, from that. So, um, essentially, you know, bowling happens, everything's cute. Um, the, um, I think they went to go get drinks. The guys did, um, Kamari and Zach at the bowling alley and, um, you know, had a little girl chat between Nat and, um, Roxy about the guys. And then, um, also, you know, after the modeling thing, um, Kamari then gets an email confirmation basically that he got the gig, um, that he will be, you know, signed and working in Texas at least, or, you know, basically able to do modeling in Texas with an agency. So that was exciting. And then it was just cute footage of this party where, you know, Roxy, she's just like dancing. She is just twerking everywhere. Oh my gosh, I swear every episode there was a Roxy twerk and I was here for it. I loved it. I was here for it. I'm here for the natural hair. I'm here for the afro. I'm here for it all. And the natural afro, not a wig afro, but like naturally that's Roxy's hair. Like that is so cool. Um, so, and then it just got to a point where now Kamari is just like wide open on Roxy. Like you see a different Kamari to where, you know, normally he'll flirt, but it's like a flirt to an extent. But like with Roxy, he's just like wide open because she just brings out this like side of him that is so nice to watch. And so they're having this party. The drinks are flowing. Roxy's dancing. She's doing her little twerk. Um, 
Kamari's like imitating different positions and things with some type of pillow. And the next thing you know, Kamari goes over and then slaps um, Roxy's behind. And it's just and then everybody goes crazy. And then for whatever reason, the confessional goes to Abby. And I'm like, why do we need Abby's reaction? Isn't she over Kamari? Like, what is going on? Didn't wasn't she into Adam now? Like, what's happening? Why are we still trying to make this a thing? Like, I, I just don't understand. I'm like, this was never her boyfriend. Like, why are we doing this? And so um, then after all of this partying, um, there was another event, another evening where it shows at the end of the episode. It's like it's one of my favorite scenes, honestly, of the Roxy and Kamari um, limited footage that we got the second half. Um, but essentially, Kamari comes over to say goodnight to everybody. And he scares um, Roxy because she's like in the hallway um, where Kiki and Natalie are like in the bedroom or whatever in her bedroom, um, just kind of laying on the bed and talking or whatever. And so Kamari, you know, he comes and he says, bye. Everybody's like, oh, I love you or whatever. And, um, you know, Roxy, she's like, I'm asleep. I'm, I'm sleepy. I'm ready to go. And so then um, Kamari, he's about to leave. And so then Roxy's like, wait, did you, you know, give me a hug? Bye or whatever. And so Kamari's like, mm mm. And so he basically goes back to give Roxy this hug and the way that they're interacting, the way that they are laughing. Um, it was, it felt like an intimate hug. Like it was, it was very, it was a nice hug. I was like feeling a certain type of way. And I was like, this is so cute. I love their dynamic. I love their energy. Um, I love how, you know, they just bounce off of each other. Um, and it's so cute. And so like Natalie is freaking out in the background and she's like telling Kiki to shush. Um, and then she like yells Roxy's name and she's like, you guys are real. You guys are the real deal. And you guys need to, you know, see about this and really pursue this and really handle this. And so, um, you know, Kamari's in his feelings because he keeps talking about, you know, how beautiful Roxy is. And, you know, he's feeling certain things after that hug that he gave her and, um, you know, basically said, you know, there's too much tension at this point between the two of them. Things need to proceed forward. Things need to go. And basically, Kamari's like, you know, I need to just shoot my shot and see what happens and just go from there. So he sends the little text, um, you know, let's, you know, do you want to Netflix and chill? Um, then Miss Roxy hits the little thumbs up on the text message and I'm like, oh, here we go. And so then it was honey because, um, Roxy says in the confessional, she's like, oh, you ready? Oh, okay. Oh, you're ready, babe. Okay. Let me go get my hair tie. And I was like, oh, when she said the hair tie, I already knew what time it was. I already knew what was about to go down and it was so hilarious. Um, so then, um, Roxy moseys over to um, Kamari's place, to Kamari's room. Um, Roxy's in the confessional saying how it's getting hot in here and this and that. And, you know, tensions are high. And Kamari's like, yep, we're riding the wave. And so then there was this shot of Kamari um, who had his shirt off. And I was like, you guys are just, this is just not right. You guys are not fair. Um but essentially, he put the towel over the camera, and um, <laughs> then we hear in the background just the giggling between Roxy and Kamari, and, you know, Kamari's basically saying, you know, F it, I'm tired of holding back, and... Um, then Roxy says, I have a magic chick I want to show you. And then we hear like some more slapping and giggling. And then it just goes to um, the credits. And I'm like, why did they do this to us? And so another thing I wanted to add to that is so Kamari, again, with the respect level that he has for Roxy in comparison is he truly wanted to get to know her first before things progressed to the next level. And he made it a point to make their intimate moments that they shared together completely private and off camera. He was not using a towel or a sheet to cover the cameras when it was hookup time with Abby. He could care less. But with Roxy, he is going 
the extra mile to be protective, to be respectful, to be intentional with her and to step his game up. And so, like I said prior, you know, men are going to act accordingly depending upon what they think of you. And if they think of you only as a certain type of way, they're going to treat you as such. But if they think of you is a certain type of level of a certain type of caliber of a woman, they're going to put forth that effort. And that is what, you know, Kamari did. Um, I feel like also they purposely didn't show us Roxy and Kamari dates because they would show us these scenes where it was clear, like either Kamari was in um, Roxy's room or Roxy was in Kamari's room and they both would obviously be getting ready to go somewhere. And obviously I feel like we missed out on a potential romantic date somewhere. I know they had to have gone on, at least one. I'm almost like 99.9% .9 sure that they did because there was this one look that Roxy had um, when you see some of the scene transitions and you did not ever see like what materialized of that outfit that Roxy was wearing. And so I was just trying to figure out, okay, why are we being deprived of you know, the connection that is Roxy and Kamari. But we got so much footage of the hot mess express that was Abby and Kamari's situationship and how emotional and exhausting and crazy that whole thing was. And so then it was funny because the following morning after, you know, there was romantic time um, between Kamari and Roxy, um, you know, Kamari comes over like there's no like nothing happened the night before like 10 in the morning and you know he's all loud and saying good morning to the girls um Roxy's upstairs in her room and so Isha's downstairs and so Roxy they're so messy her and Isha are messy because I know exactly what they were doing more so on Isha though but Roxy was like is that Kamari and so um Isha was like, yeah, you know, he's always loud in the morning. And so then Roxy replies, he's even louder in bed with a smiley face. And I'm like, oh, crap. And she like shouts this in front of, um, you know, the group and asks essentially, um, you know, wants to know what happened with him and Roxy, if they hooked up. And he she asks her right in front of Abby and um you know, Kamari is well, like, uh, yeah, no, uh, maybe we possibly did and and this and that. And it is hilarious because then um, all hell breaks loose because now Abby's in her feelings again. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, Abby, you were just into Adam five minutes ago. And five minutes before that, you were into your hinge hookup that you stayed the night over and had a one night stand with. Um, like, you were the one that ended things with Kamari and said that you didn't want to continue the friends with benefits thing because you felt he disrespected you by talking to other girls at the bar. So why do you care about him and Roxy? And I felt like subconsciously she wants to cuss out Roxy, but she knows that she doesn't have, you know, the, the, the wherewithal to do it. She knows it would not end well for her because number one, Roxy didn't take anybody. Um, you knew what it was with Kamari from the jump. He told you from jump that things were not going to be serious. Things were only going to be friends with benefits they were going to be casual you initiated all the conversations you tried to kiss him in public and he curved you he wanted to test how far he could go with other women in front of you because he did not respect you what man who is truly into you and only you is going to be kissing other women out in public is going to be leaving publicly in front of you um with other women who's going to do that Kamari was showing you that he was not serious about you and you were not taking the hint and you got clingy after one night of passion and were doing the most and you got your feelings hurt. And you thought ever since then that he was, you know, tied to you, that he was your person, that nobody else was allowed to be around him. Nobody else was allowed to do anything with him. And you got your feelings hurt. So after all of this happens, um, 
Abby, you know, is asking to talk to Kamari outside and wants to have a conversation with him. And I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, I heard you and Roxy last night. And so I was thinking to myself and I'm like, but how did you hear Roxy and Kamari when Roxy went over to Kamari? Like she was physically in Kamari's room where we physically saw Kamari put the towel sheet over the camera. So how would you have heard them unless you did your own type of sneaky thing and snuck over there and tried to hang out with Adam or somebody and overheard them? Because we did not see Roxy and Kamari have sexy time at Roxy's room. It all took place at Kamari's. So what was up with that? I just felt like Abby just wanted to pick something, you know, to once again, you know, be upset about and do her projecting on Kamari because she can't have him. So I feel like she starts these stupid arguments and hopes that, you know, he reacts a certain way to her or, you know, she still wants some sort of confirmation that she can still have him. And since she's not getting that, she's all in her feelings. She's all been out of shape. She didn't expect this connection with Roxy to be more than how Kamari treated her. And she's jealous. She's upset about it. And she is just projecting all of her insecurities um, onto this man. And it's just not right. It's not right at all. You know, she backed off of Adam once Natalie confronted her and she was the one that dumped Kamari, yet she still acts like she owns him or that, you know, she's in charge of everything Kamari has to do. He has to run by her or ask for permission for her. And so I appreciated Kamari basically saying in the confessional that he didn't feel like he owed anybody an apology that he needed to do anything. But he said he just did it so that he can keep the peace. But he's like, he moved on. Like, you know, things with him and Abby were what they were. Um, they weren't serious at the time. So he's not sure why she has all this emotion and all this energy that's taking place. But she does. And therefore, you know, he's over it. And I wish Abby would get over it, you know, and it's funny because it's like what happened to you, you know, hiding in your room and stuff the rest of the time because you couldn't handle seeing Roxy and Kamari together. But all that changed when Adam came into the house. But now, not only did you not stay in your room, you obviously had to have gone over to the guy's place because that would have been the only way that you heard Roxy and Kamari. And you're the only person that's saying this. We haven't heard this from any of the other house guests. Because nobody else, we didn't hear Isha, we didn't hear Natalie, we didn't hear Kiki, we didn't hear um, Adam say anything, we didn't hear anybody. But I think Abby was jealous, she wanted to be nosy, and she got her feelings hurt. Because we didn't hear about any noise that took place when Abby and Kamari hooked up. So that tells me right there that it was a lot of gymnastics happening with Kamari and Roxy and Abby is pressed. She is pressed like a panini over the fact that Roxy and Kamari are making it happen. They have a connection. It's real. It's getting somewhere. And she could not, you know, tie Kamari down or have Kamari be all about her. So all she has are these, you know, conversations where she's you know, quote unquote, dumping him, quote unquote, calling him out, quote unquote, trying to question everything and do all this otherness to, you know, get attention. That's all she has. That's all she's able to do. So in the midst of this, I wish we would have gotten a follow up conversation if Kamari like what the conversation was with Kamari and Roxy when I because I'm sure he told her about this mess with Abby. Um, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall to find out what Roxy's reaction was to Abby saying something to him. Um, so that was crazy. Um, 
But, um, oh, but then I remember Natalie did say something that she was hungover and tired, but something had woke her up. But, um, you know, it was so cute because Roxy was kind of replaying the night before and was, you know, talking about how things were different. But like, you know, once they started kissing, it was on and popping and, you know, it was weird because, you know, they were friends for so long. And, you know, she's like, do I dap you up? Do I kiss you? Do I hug you? This and that. Because, like, we're friends, but, like, I'm also attracted to you and this and that. And so it was just nice. And she was just talking about how he kissed her so soft. And um, then they were making out. And then things just kind of just, you know, then intensified. And she said she can't look at him the same way. But, like, at the same token, she likes how she feels when she's around him. She likes how Kamari makes her feel. And, you know, she could see herself falling for him, which is scary. Because she said in previous relationships, she usually has a wall up. She usually is scared. Um, and then she also confirms once again that she had been attracted to, to Kamari from the start, which we knew. Um, I think subconsciously she probably just tried to pursue things with Michael. Um, but I don't think she was really into Michael like that. But I think she just thought that Kamari was going to go for Abby. And technically he didn't. Technically Abby went for him and he just kind of went along with it. Um, because the way Kamari stared at... Um, Roxy episode one when they were in the grocery store and he was staring at like her interacting with Michael like WTF <laughs> and, and then um when they went to the bar where you know Kamari was talking to other girls and we briefly saw Roxy there with another black gentleman but we did not know any details in terms of if he was like a hinge date or if he was like a friend of hers we had no details but if you look at the way that the camera pan, if you go back to that episode, the camera tries to make it seem like there's a thing with Kamari and Abby that Kamari's looking at Abby on the bull. But if you actually follow Kamari's eyes, his eyes and his vantage point is looking directly at Roxy and that guy she was with. That is what I think took place. I you can I can tell you that is what took place. <laughs> um he felt a certain way um about seeing Roxy with another guy. He doesn't he didn't care about Abby. Abby was not he was she was a non-factor to him. She was just a hookup to him because he's openly going out with other women. He's not doing that with Roxy. He's serious about Roxy. He respects Roxy enough not to do that to her. So anyways, as Roxy is recapping her night of passion with Natalie, you know, she's going on in the confessionals, how she doesn't want to, you know, she usually has her walls up in a relationship. She's usually scared to open up, but she says like she just feels like how real and how organic things are and how she does like Kamari and that she doesn't, you know, want to fall hard but she sees herself falling hard for him because she's scared of getting hurt of course and so natalie is so happy for her she says like she looks extremely happy and um you know i'm here for it like their whole vibe is just completely different like they just both have this glow about them so um then later on in the day um, there is like a little double date thing, but not really a date because Adam and Natalie aren't like that. But the group essentially of Adam, Kamari and Roxy and Natalie, they go somewhere to go play some sand volleyball. And, you know, of course, Miss Roxy is bragging that she uh, had played varsity volleyball back in high school and that she had these nails and this and that because like I didn't even it was so weird there was so much going on that I kept think I kept forgetting about Roxy and her nails throughout this whole series um but yeah because I like long nails too but it was just funny it was so cute and um it was cute watching you know them all play volleyball because Natalie cannot play volleyball and um but it was cute because like Adam still was trying to help her and trying to help her serve and this and that and so um you know Kamari obviously was on the same team as um you know Miss Roxy and you know there was a one point where like Roxy was in front of him and Kamari's like flirting he's like I like the view and you know 
Roxy, she's like into it because she's like, this chocolate is glistening out in the sun. Like Kamari, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like Kamari was already attractive when the show began, when we first like got introduced to him. But, you know, with the tan and the sun just hitting him and the glistening, um, you know, when him and Roxy started talking after the volleyball, like it was just everything like you just saw the glistening of his waves and his hair, um, the skin, the chocolate was just glistening. So I saw why Roxy was caught up, but I think they met each other's match, both, you know, on a friend vibe, but also romantically and also physically as well. It sounds as though because they just really, you know, bounce well off of each other. So there was just a lot. And it's just so cute because Roxy, she just keeps like now when she talks about Kamari compared to before, now she's all like, oh, it's getting hot. And she's like fanning herself in the confessionals. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, girl, what did Kamari do to you? And Kamari, what did she do to you? Because OMG, <laughs> you guys are just you guys are making it happen and you guys have an amazing connection and I hope it works out and it was also nice because at first you know Kamari was all like yeah I'm not looking for a girlfriend I'm not in Austin for that I just want friends with benefits and even initially he was thinking that was going to be the same case with Roxy but the thing was now that he had spent so much time with her and now that things were progressing with them and now that they actually took time to know each other first before focusing on, you know, their physical attraction to each other, um, he's even catching feelings and he's even talking about potentially, you know, being exclusive with her, potentially being in a relationship with her, potentially, um, you know, them going the distance, which I think is amazing because it's like different people bring out different qualities in you, you know, certain people who you only see as a hookup, they're only going to bring out that type of side of you. You're not going to take them seriously or you just have somebody that's on the roster, but still on the bench. But when you are serious about somebody and they're your starter, they're your main person, they're the person that you want to pursue something with, it is a completely um, different vibe. So after they played volleyball, um, they are still, you know, there. However, Roxy and Kamari take a break. They go and get some water um, and then have a talk on the bench while Adam and Natalie are still, you know, trying to play volleyball in the background. And I think Natalie's trying to practice her serve and this and that because she was just having issues trying to get the volleyball like over the net. So, um, but essentially, they wanted to have a conversation, Roxy and Kamari, because they haven't had like a talk about anything since, you know, their little hookup the night before. So, um, you know, Roxy, you know, kind of like got the ball rolling with everything. And they like started off with like a cute little joke in terms of, you know, Roxy saying like how there was like sand in her nose and she was going to have like a beach baby. It was funny or a beach belly. Um, it was hilarious. But, um, you know, they really got to have a good conversation um, on the beach where, well, not the beach, but where they were playing beach volleyball. And Roxy's, you know, reiterating how things felt organic between the two of them. Um, you know, she likes how she feels like when she is around Kamari. Um, you know, she likes how they interact and, you know, she feels like at this point after what happened the night before that, you know, there could be a possibility of rejection, but essentially like she wanted to see kind of where things go. And it was just cute because it was like they're both like hot, sweaty after like this intense volleyball session and, you know, however hot it is in Austin. And, you know, Roxy basically is telling Kamari, you know, at this point, we're more than friends. Um, she feels that energy. Um, you know, again, she just kept talking about how organic things were. Um, 
Kamari said that, you know, he's comfortable around her. He feels the same way. He lies, likes how they interact and, you know, have a good time. And Roxy was telling him how he feels like really familiar. It doesn't feel like heavy and how he makes her feel light and just makes her feel warm and everything. And she likes how she feels when she's with him and just loves him, loves him and everything. Well, she didn't say love. Let's let's not um, escalate things. <laughs> but it was cute because then Kamari said, aw. And um, and it was just, it was nice. But Roxy really felt like, you know, this is somebody that she could let in, that um she can open up to more, that she like her walls can come down and everything else. And she felt as though like Kamari's light is very warm, it's very welcoming. And it was just so cute. Like the close-ups on them, like the melanin glistening, like it was just the cutest thing, this conversation. Um, and they he was just basically saying, like, throughout the time that he's been here, like nothing had been serious enough. Um, but you know, with there's something different that's happening with Roxy. And so Roxy's, you know, saying, of course, in the confessional, like fingers crossed and everything else. And so, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, Rox it, Roxy's like, I'm gonna keep it a buck. And Kamari's like, oh, well, tell me how you really feel, you know, because they were just really, you know, opening up. And it was it was really beautiful to see, you know, how much, you know, this went because, you know, easily we remember the the craziness of previously of what you know Kamari was talking but you see a different side of Kamari when he is with Roxy and so it's very nice so Roxy's like of course open to the idea of love and all this and it was just it was so cute they were they were so cute together and so you know then we get to see a little bit of what Kamari said and just the you know the energy is there and that he holds himself to like a certain standard which I said earlier because she's passionate about everything how she loves her family um, how she cares about the causes that she believes in how you know how much she cares for the people she's close to and how like hard she's going to ride for them and so um and so this is and so that energy that type of passion rubbed off on Kamari for, forced him to secure his modeling bag for forced him to put in the effort with Roxy um because he's like listening to her he's paying attention to the things that she's saying he's paying attention to how she is you know passionate about her projects passionate about her family passionate about her personal life and the causes and things that she wants to do and so that had a positive effect off of Kamari in that it made him more passionate and more um you know intentional with Roxy and he even keep re they both keep reiterating that there's something different with each other which lets you know that this is not something casual this is not something that's like just for the show or just something that's for you know the moment or being caught up in the bubble of Austin that this really could go somewhere and the fact that they both intend on going back to Austin after the holidays is nice and so he even kisses her on the cheek out in public and Kamari tells her you know that they want it he wants things to keep going and he wants her to sip wine and them to like talk tonight and this and that and that they're right across the street from each other so it doesn't matter where they're at and he like slaps her but again and then he's like low-key the camera pans out but he's like low-key kind of talking about um some other stuff with um Roxy's behind that they cut out that I knew where they were going with it um but it was cute because another thing I noticed just in the body language was when um you know Kamari was talking about them drinking wine and having another talk or whatever um that Roxy had licked her lips and then Kamari had licked her lips right after that. And I was like, oh my gosh, it is going to be on and popping with these two. So it was just, it was just nice. Like I am standing whatever it is that comes of the Kamari and Roxy sweepstakes because this was beautiful to see. And I am just so agitated that we did not see more of it like that was really my biggest gripe was we did not see enough Roxy and Kamari 
We mainly saw them in scene transitions and we really only saw them like the most footage we got was just like I said, the hug that was at the end of um, episode 10, I want to say. And then episode 11, of course, when, um, you know, they have like the volleyball chat. So I don't know how many times you guys have like, if you guys like rewatch that or whatever, those of you who are like into what Roxy and Kamari got going on. Um, but it was just cute. It was so cute to watch. And so then we still like see nothing with Roxy and Kamari. Even after that, we saw like a few little interactions where like they are, um, you know, in the bedroom, just like doing like their own little vibe and like playing around or whatever. And then, um, like it does, it's like a couple of scene transitions, it felt like, and then it goes back to them and they like hug and this and that. And, but we just, we never got to see like fully what the interactions were. Like if they went out on any dates, but they showed us dates with Isha and Michael, they showed full dates of Abby and her shenanigans. Um, like we just never got to see the one-on-one -on -one date with Kamari and, um, Roxy out in public like we saw the double date with the bowling and the double date with the volleyball but we did not see like the individual date which I know for they had to have had one um like I would have been shocked if they did not and so um so then like I said because I had, we had already talked about you know them having like their final outing but then they also had like a final dinner um kind of like a pre Thanksgiving dinner um to where everybody basically said everything that they were grateful for and um everybody kind of went around the table although they didn't really show everybody say what they were grateful for which again shady boots but um, I'm sure it was something, you know, really nice that the people who are like actually in happy couples, you know, would say. And so um, then after that, they show everybody leaving. And so Roxy and Kamari, they leave for the airport together. And, um, you know, and then it was funny because they're all saying goodbye to their roommates. There's like a weird, awkward, like frenemy hug that Roxy and Abby have. And then Abby's doing the most when Kamari's trying to say goodbye to her and Kamari's basically like, look, I we had established before this that we would be friends before anything. So let's just be chill because I felt like Abby was about to go into one of her little rants. And I just loved how Kamari just shut that down and basically was like, listen, you know, we agreed that this was going to be what this was, the what this was, and we would always be friends no matter what. And so that was that. And so then he went on to, you know, his woman and <laughs> went to go to Roxy's room to see if she was ready to leave for the airport. And um, and then it was on and popping after that. So and it was so cute because they're just both like vibing off each other. He always is calling her beautiful and sexy and and this. And so um, but it was just cute. And he's like helping her with her bags. And all the stuff that she has. And, you know, Kamari's happy. He says they have a lot of things in common, a lot of common interest. And he feels like he can lean on her. He can talk to her and that things can go somewhere. And it was just beautiful. I was like, oh, um, so that was kind of the gist of that. Like, I just I love everything that the Kamari and Roxy have going on. It's very special. It's very wonderful to watch. And it's very beautiful to see. Um, so that's on that. And so then they'll be back to Boston or not Boston. Why am I thinking of Boston? Austin after um, the holidays. So um, but overall, you know, great first season. I felt like I said the drama was very light overall comparison to the real world, which I felt was very nice. It was like a nice energy. I felt the adults were mature in terms of talking through any issues. The only thing I would change is hopefully if Natalie has watched back some of the episodes, I hope she's not still friends with Abby because um, Abby is not her friend. <laughs> she is not. And Abby, I don't think, told her about the sneaky link with um, her and Adam before, you know, once they had that conversation. So um, I hope Natalie, you know, receives what, you know, people are saying. Um, and so then just as far as some little updates that we've seen, there has been some indications potentially that Roxy and Kamari might still actually be together. 
They're doing a lot of flirting on social media, both on Instagram and Twitter. And, um, you know, it's it's just cute seeing their little interactions. Kamari's like reposting her. Um, she had like a post the other day, like where she was at this. Um, it looked to be like a Christmas party, and she wore blue. And she was like, "I don't have to do a little black black dress because his favorite color is blue." And so then Kamari responds with like blue hearts, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I can't take the cuteness. This is cuteness overload." I'm not sure if Isha and Michael are still together. And I don't know about that. So I wish we could have a reunion. I want a reunion so bad um, to find out what the updates are and everybody, especially Bruce, because I actually missed Bruce. Um, I felt I felt Bruce left too soon, but I understand it. If you're homesick, you're homesick. And um, sometimes you just need to go back home and kind of get that out of your system. But I almost wanted it to be a situation where maybe he could have just taken a week to just go see his family and just really reassess before he made that final decision of turning down that job or, you know, potentially, um, you know, I, I feel like he backed off too soon of pursuing things with Isha. I truly do. I really wish he would have, you know, tried to, you know, move forward with that. Cause I think the problem with Isha, I think she let Abby get into her head. And I think, you know, just some of the preconceived notions that she had, I just think they needed to have like a really, you know, sit down conversation somewhere, not at a club where there's like loud music and everything else going on, but someplace private to where they could truly, you know, have something. So, and really establish. So I would love a reunion. I would love a season two. I would love for them to continue filming and continue picking up filming um, in January after the holidays. I would love that. I am also, I would love the option too of them to implement this um, like a 20 somethings, but maybe a 30 somethings too also um, as an idea for Netflix, but also to implement this in different cities, kind of similar to how the real world does a different city every season. But instead of it only being one season of Austin, I think they could, you know, do this for a few more seasons. Um, I truly do because Netflix usually tries to keep things at least, you know, three or four seasons if it's a successful show. So I really want um, you know, I'm hoping they're considering that. Like, it sounds like, I mean, ever since this came out, it's been in the top 10 every day. So I just don't feel it was enough episodes. But, you know, I feel as though it was enough to kind of just get your palate, you know, like you you were you want more now now that you've had like a taste um so i definitely could see potential that we could you know have another season with the same cast see how you know their lives are after the holidays see how um life is for them in austin if things progress with their careers if things progress with their personal lives and um and then we can also implement another city and go somewhere else too. So that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping that Netflix is already on the ball with that. And this isn't like a one and done type of thing. Because I feel like this is the type of reality show where you can do multiple seasons with the same cast. And it's not like a competition show where you could technically only do one season with the same cast. And then in the event, those same cast members come back for another season would be because of it being an all-star season or something. But I feel like with a real world type of show, you can always do multiple seasons because it is people basically navigating everyday life. And that never, you know, goes out of style or never gets old because that's everyday life. That's what people are dealing with. That's what people are going through. So um, that is all that I have on that. But yeah, I mean, very good first season. Like I said, I appreciated that there wasn't too much drama. Um, I still felt like in certain points there was like a lot of hot mess things that happened, like specifically with Abby. But I'm hoping that once she watches this back that she realizes that she was doing the most and probably a lot of it was projecting on her insecurities and her feeling as though she had to be with, you know, the hottest men in the room and that they had to be the ones, you know, to treat her like a certain way and had to be the one that she was chosen over the other ladies in the house. And it, it was just a lot. So I'm hoping that, you know, she sees this back and, you know, really realizes that, 
you know, the way she was moving wasn't it. Um, and then, like I said, I hope things are going well with Roxy and Kamari. I hope things are going well with my, with Michael and Isha, but low key, like I ship Bruce and Isha still, I still ship them. I don't care. <laughs> like I still ship them. So, um, so I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know if Isha's watched this back and maybe felt like she should have gave Bruce a chance or, or what, but I still ship Isha and, Bru and Bruce. I think that was a missed opportunity there. Um, and then, you know, I hope everything's well with Natalie. Natalie and Kiki are receiving so much love on social media. Um, and I just hope that they, you know, their self-esteem improves, that they, um, you know, really kind of see certain things that, you know, pay attention to certain signs that they saw on the show. And I hope that helps them and their growth moving forward. But overall, this was just a very great cast. Um, I just loved how well everybody was able to get along with each other. I just loved the energy. I loved the vibes. And I loved how they handled conflict, um, with the exception of how Abby handled conflict. Um, but, um, but no, but no more shade on that. Um, so I apologize how long this was. Um, I just had a lot of things that I wanted to say about the last few sets of episodes. And I just wanted to give you guys a lot of meat, um, a lot of things to, you know, decompress and think about um, because I did not see too many people doing reviews on this show. Um, however, I do see a lot of conversation about this show on um, social media. But I just wanted to give you guys something very detailed, very thorough, um, since this was the last few set of episodes. And um, it doesn't look like as of now we've heard any updates in terms of like there being a reunion or another season or what they're going to do. So hopefully maybe Netflix makes an announcement or something um, soon or tells us something. I mean, I'd be even happy with the virtual reunion. I mean, just something to give us something, um, some type of closure on the season or if there is going to be another season. So so there's that. Um, oh, and also another thing I did not see. Kamari and um, Miss Roxy ever kiss. They never showed us that, but they always showed Isha and Michael kissing. Why didn't we ever see Roxy and Kamari kiss? I was so agitated. <laughs> I was like, why can't we? But but nonetheless, it, it you know, it's like, why do we have to beg for, you know, the littlest things? I don't understand. We needed more screen time of Kamari and Roxy. So bad so bad but um but nonetheless that that is all I have um for real this time <laughs> um so those are all of my thoughts please let me guys let me know what you guys think of these last set of episodes um this again is episodes 9 through 12 let me know what you guys like what you guys didn't like what you guys agree with disagree with everything if this is your first time at my channel welcome thank you so much for visiting I hope you guys come back if you're back a second or third time thank you so much again for supporting i truly appreciate you and please do not forget to like comment and subscribe also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified the moment that i post new content new videos on my channel um, so that you are up to date with the latest and greatest that is going on in the world of entertainment and per usual i will talk to you guys again very soon